Hi everyone, my name's Laura and I'm a specky seamstress. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, it's not been long because <laughs> I'm filming this straight away. Uh, welcome back to part two of the pattern hacks I plan to make for 2024. Um, I should really know by now that I ramble quite a lot and trying to fit 10 patterns <laughs> into one vlog was just too much. Um, I actually originally started writing down the pattern hacks and was like five. Five will be an appropriate number to talk about. And then my brain produced more than five. <laughs> so I'd like to share them with you, but let's do part one and part two. Um, so if you're tuning into this and you haven't seen part one, it will already be up on the channel. So go back and watch it. Um, and if you're tuning in because you saw part one, like yesterday, <laughs> thanks for coming back. So I mentioned in the last video that there were two that were new patterns to me. So I think I'm going to start with those, even though that's going to take me out of order on my notes, which is probably going to confuse me in a minute. <laughs> but let's go for number six, the Lupita dress. So the Lupita dress is uh, by Miss Romo's Creations. It goes up to a 53 inch bust in the pattern, but there's also a tutorial for drafting your own um, to any measurement that you choose because the pattern originally was a tutorial it was a blog post about someone's experiments basically with drafting their own pattern um and then they have produced a set of kind of standard sizes as well and this is a really interesting pattern so it's like a an apron i suppose it has a hole in the head and then you tie round the, the back and around the front I, can't, I want to call it a popover dress, but it's, I don't think it is a popover dress, but it's similar to that. Like it doesn't have side seams. Um, and I've seen quite a lot of these going around on Instagram. I think there was a chain of people, sort of someone, someone made one for themselves and then tried to share what their process was. And then a few other people tried to make some um, as well. So I think there's quite a lot of information online <laughs> about this, but there is a pattern. And I love the idea of it and uh, I love some of the versions that I've seen. <laughs> I think it's really, really cool. But I don't wear a lot of things without sleeves, which having just come from a video where I was talking about wanting to make some strappy dresses, I realise it's a massive contradiction. I can't, I, the heart wants what the heart wants. Is that a valid thing to say at this <laughs> moment in time? I'm not, I don't wear the kind of sleeveless, like strappy okay but normally over something or under something not normally on its own but sleeveless I just I don't know if I've ever worn a sleeveless dress except when I first started learning to sew and I was too scared of sleeve caps so I would like to add a sleeve but I, that's going to be quite complicated well it could be and it couldn't be uh the washy dress by made by Ray which is now called the Trillium dress which I have a video way back from somewhere in the depths of 2020 2020 I think um is a dress that doesn't have a proper sleeve it has these little sleeve caps and they're not my favorite sleeve in the world but they would work perfectly well on this pattern because they don't meet at the bottom so you're basically sewing like a like a semicircle like a crescent into the sleeve cap and I think I could do that so I think that would be quite an easy way of adding a sleeve and that's probably what I'll do in the first one just to test the fit of the rest of the body um, and to see the style that I like and the length that I like and all of those kind of things but I have been wondering whether it would be possible to make the dress so that it connects at the sleeves, like at the armpit, and then opens sort of a little bit further down instead, and whether that would lose the effect of the tie or not. And I don't know. And I think that it's possible I'll make a little like half size version just to see how it like hangs but I might just make make something and see. One of the things I realised when I was tidying my sewing room the other day is that I just have loads of fabrics in like a box that's labelled twirls 
and I buy stuff sometimes thinking oh yeah that'll be really good for a twirl because it's like really cheap or whatever it's just sitting there <laughs> so maybe I should just use some of it and I've also got quite a lot of fabric where I quite like it but I'm not in love with it and you know what if I make up a dress and it doesn't fit if I just end up cutting it off at the bodice and turning it into a skirt that's fine too um although I was saying I don't feel super comfortable wearing skirts a lot of the time at the minute I have been finding I've been wearing some maxi skirts so if I have enough fabric to make a bodice and a maxi skirt I can you know fix it into something that I will wear <laughs> if I don't end up wearing the bodice or as it is so that is number six I talked a long time about that one. um number seven is out of order on this so I'm going to get myself confused but it's the matchy matchy sewing club collage gather dress and um, that goes up to a max 62 inch bust 57 inch waist and 67 inch hip now this is another one that I say it's new to me which is true I've never made the pattern but I have made a version of the pattern from another pattern hack because this dress went viral well it was a top pattern that went viral on Instagram really really super popular it's a very like loose fitting boxy top with a flat stri stripe stripe strap stripe strip down the, down the middle um little kind of dolman sleeves panels and then from the waist seam which is actually more like a bust seam like it's very empire line um is gathered so you get this kind of interesting effect of the colour block down the middle and the gather down the down the edge and I really like the look of it but the fit is not my normal style at all um and I thought I could just give it a go <laughs> from a pattern that I had already um and maybe include a bust dart you know like just try and make it a little bit more me um and I made a version which I don't, I've never taken a style picture of, but I do wear semi-frequently and I do really like. Um, I really like, I don't love it. <laughs> I think I might have chosen the wrong fabric a little bit. I also made the sleeves a little bit too snug, <laughs> which isn't great. Um, but I would like to play around with it a bit more. And I think there are potentially two options for me playing around. One, I will absolutely buy the pattern because I think I need to look at what the proportions are. But there are two options for the hack that I make next, I think. Um, one, I will either add a waist seam all the way round. So in the version that I made, I, I only added the waist seam at the side bits as it is in the pattern. But one of the things that I have an issue with is that the, the strip down the middle just doesn't hang quite right when it gets towards the bottom because it's being kind of pushed by the gathered pieces and I don't know if that's partly because I added ties to mine to, to cinch it in a little bit at the waist and so that's kind of making it a bit like skew if but I'm not 100% sure and basically I might try adding a waist seam all the way around and seeing if that helps. The other version that I'm thinking about making is mashing it up with the sewing Massan? Massine? Mason? You know, the one who made the Sicily slip dress um, with their Tulia top. Now the Tulia top has similar colour blocking, but instead of being straight down, it's got an angle and it doesn't go all the way to a point, like it's not a triangle, but it's that sort of vibe. And I think that that might give the gathered pieces the kind of space they need to flow <laughs> fill the space I don't, I don't know I've got a feeling it might remove some of my problems with the dress and I think that it could also end up looking like quite art deco-y in shape so I'm quite keen on trying that and I think that I will get those pattern pieces out try and work out the proportions a little bit and maybe give that a bit of a go this is the sort of dress that works really well in a whole different bunch of color block options and some of the favorite versions that i've seen online are like different styles of check and gingham so i might kind of pull together some fabrics that i've got and see what might go together <laughs> because i think that 
yeah it's quite cool and like one of the cool things about it is that you can then make a feature of some fabrics that you don't have very much of i've got so many fabrics that i don't have loads of <laughs> but that i love and i would like to make use of them and like feature them in a nice outfit somewhere i don't want them all to just become linings of bags <laughs> so um yes that is something that i will play around with definitely so that's number seven um so number eight is something i've already talked about actually in my welcome back video um briefly is the jennifer lauren handmade kinfolk dress which um i've made several versions of and i really like and i talked about how i've made a couple of set in sleeve versions and i wasn't sure if i wanted to carry on playing with that or not but while i was away with work last week i wore one of the versions which had set in sleeves and it's not perfect but it's definitely worth persevering is what i've decided um i haven't got the shoulder right yet um so it's still a little bit too wide but i want to play around with that and i also want to use the pattern hack on the website to turn the kinfolk into a shirt dress my mother would say it's not a shirt dress because it doesn't have a collar it's a button-up dress because it just buttons all the way up but in my mind that is still a shirt dress so sorry mum um but i think i will yeah make a version with that because i think that'll be a really nice style to have um in my wardrobe so that one was a nice and quick easy one to talk about <laughs> which is good for someone who rambles as much as me um that pattern goes to a 56 inch high bust um which uh, it comes in cup sizes so if you're you were using the f cup pieces that goes up to a 62 inch bust like full bust 52 inch waist and a 62 inch hip um, and yes i like that pattern there will definitely be more of it over the next period of time <laughs> so number nine is the olea dress by paper theory patterns now the olea is a pattern for a shirt and a dress um it goes up to a 56 inch bust a 48 inch waist and a 58 inch hip I said I write 56, 48, 58. But paper theory patterns have a lot of ease in them. I always size down twice. I haven't actually written down here what version, version size I made for the version that I made. Oh, my brain is struggling a bit now. <laughs> Good job we're on a nine of ten. Um, but I made a version of the Olea. I cannot remember how much I've spoken about this before. Um, but I made a version, a colour blocked version, which I love. It's made of linen. It gets softer every time it comes out of the washing machine. Um, it's very bright, so it doesn't go with everything. But it also kind of does go with everything. And I do wear it a lot. Um, and I would really like to make a dress, but not the dress that's in the pattern. Because <laughs> why do I, you know, I don't make things easy for myself, basically. But that is why we sew, to make things that we want doesn't matter if it takes a bit more effort um it always seems to so <laughs> that's probably good um but yes so i would like to make a version i will chop it off at the waist i will add an a-line skirt uh, i have previously got all of the pattern pieces out to do this and have still never actually done it and um, partly because i find it really hard to pick what fabrics to use when i color block um, I actually really like the idea of this dress being plain black from the like seam across the top. Uh, yeah, it's got like a front yoke that goes all the way down the sleeves. And I think like, from the bottom down, if, if it was all black with a contrast button band and then all of the color blocking at the top, I think that would be really cool. Um, I don't think I've got any plain black. The fabric I had eyed up to use for it I used for the April hack I talked about in that return video um, but maybe I've got something plain that I could use to give the same kind of effect but yes I want to make a dress version of that I think I will probably use the kinfolk skirt as the skirt base for that and just add the button placket um, it's quite a simple make other than the collar and I like the idea of a shirt dress. I used to wear shirt dresses quite a lot when I was like a teenager, like an older teenager. But I haven't for a long time. But I, and, and I've 
the dresses that I've made that are shirt dresses in the past are all a little bit off with fit now and I need to tweak them so I would like to make one of those I think it would be really cool the ease in the olea means that I need to play around a little bit with how I'm gonna bring it in at the waist and I think the answer will probably be just to size down again um because it does have a lot of ease I, the one I wear I wear as an overshirt so maybe I just need to size down um and I'll probably add some elastic at the back in a similar style to what I have done with quite a lot of my dresses over the recent kind of year or so um but yes I need to play around with that one a little bit more so it requires a little bit more thought <laughs> than uh, than maybe some of the others on the list and number 10 we got there <laughs> well done for persevering um is another one with an interesting seam for colour blocking it almost is like there's some kind of theme um unplanned but there we go um so it's the named valo velo dress named clothing it goes to a uk size 28 which is bust 53 inch um waist 46 and a half inch i haven't written down the hip for some reason um and this dress the pattern cover is not inspiring at all i have totally glossed over this pattern so many times in my life um in my life so, so much time in my sewing browsing on the fold line um but i saw a version of it on instagram which had like a checked like gingham fabric at the top and then a plain fabric at the bottom and I really liked it and it made me go back and look at it and then I made it actually as a blog post for Backstitch with some of their washed linen. My Olea was also a blog post for Backstitch with their wash linen. Linen? <laughs> linen. Um, and uh, I made it in a blue and yellow. It's got this really cool like sweetheart neckline colour blocking but not an actual sweetheart neckline. It's not my normal style. It's got an elastic waist. It's got dolman sleeves, which I've talked about before. But I don't mind the dolman sleeves on this because they're longer and a little bit narrower than a normal dolman sleeve. Um, it still has bust starts, so it still kind of fits quite nicely. And yeah, I, it was enough for me to go with it. And actually when I was making the version I made and tried it on as a bodice I really liked it as a crop top so the hack that I might make is actually just like a crop top um this would also be a really cool one that would work as a jumper like quite fame style <laughs> jumper I think you could go quite bold with it um but that's one of the hacks that I might make with it um, and I might do that just to get the fit a little bit better because I think I probably should have sized down um to be honest it was still quite large at the back in particular so although I love this dress I don't wear it as much as I should because it just isn't one that I reach for you know and that's kind of what I want I want a wardrobe full of things that I want to reach for so I want to tweak this because I like it enough <laughs> that it has potential but I don't like it so much that I wear it all the time which is a shame for linen because linen gets better <laughs> the more you wear it so yes I would like to play around with this one of the things that's really cool about this pattern is that the um top bit is really small <laughs> so i have some half yard cuts of silk that i bought in the garment district and i could get the color block pieces out of those which is awesome like that would be a really nice way of using up some of my smaller pieces of fabric um i think that what i would like to do with this one is probably similar to what i did with the april dress and basically superimpose the top onto a set of bottom <laughs> that I like which is probably the kinfolk skirt um, or some kind of a-line skirt because I think that it's just a bit too voluminous voluminous around the like lower bust area so I will probably size down I will probably have a look at how I could get the colour blocking to work on a slightly smaller waist I guess um, but I think that's what I want to do because I really love the colour blocking. Um, I think it's got really cool potential for loads of fun things. The only other thing that I'm not sure about with the Velo in terms of how really wearable it will be in like day to day wear is that the back is very low. So I'm thinking about just changing the back entirely. 
but because it's got the colour blocking that goes across the sleeve pieces, I think that's a little bit more challenging than it sounds. <laughs> so I think I need to have a bit of a think about that and maybe a mock-up version just to try the seams, like not even expecting to wear it, but just to try and match the seams because I think, yeah, it's a little bit complicated, but I would like to persevere with it. So those are my 10. Um, I haven't really talked about fabric choices for any of these because to be honest I haven't made that link in my head yet um I might do a video in the coming weeks about the fabrics that I've bought since being off YouTube for a bit because I've bought some beautiful fabrics that really need to be out of my stash and into my wardrobe um but I haven't really made that connection as to what I really want to make with them yet so I haven't really talked about that um but I'm hoping that that has been an interesting view of what I'm planning this year. I am really pleased that <laughs> I've got this all written down and spoken out loud several times now because of technical issues, um, because I think it's put it a little bit more in my head what I actually want to do and uh, meant that now when I come to the sewing room, I've got a little bit of a list to work from. I don't have to worry about recalling all of the ideas I've had <laughs> over the last year I, I've got a bit of a plan um, and I would love to know which ones you're most excited about seeing because uh, 10 is still a big list <laughs> so um, I don't really know how I'm going to prioritise these yet other than trying to go with the flow with what excites me the most um, but you know that can be challenging when you're struggling to make a decision about stuff so I'd love to know what you think and um, what you're excited about and uh yeah keep tuned for the other videos i talked about so there will be a knitting crochet roundup um, and there'll be a maternity and pumping hack roundup um and then hopefully some normality on the channel will resume and i'll be talking about what i'm sewing <laughs> it should be exciting um because yeah that that'll be fun um that will be novel to actually talk about sewing on a sewing channel uh <laughs> yeah anyway that was a rambly end i was gonna say thank you so much for watching um and until next time bye